Why won't your fungal acne go away? Do you even have fungal acne? Let's get into it. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering three skin conditions that look like fungal acne, but are not it. And this might explain why it is that your fungal acne will not go away. What is fungal acne? Honestly, in dermatology, we don't use that terminology. Instead, we describe this as what it is, which is hiderosperum folliculitis. Folliculitis is a medical terminology for a skin condition that centers around inflammation within the hair follicle, AKA the pore. And it can have a variety of different causes. In this case, it's gonna be the yeast, pterosperum that naturally lives on everyone's skin, but in certain conditions can become too comfortable, multiply a number, create more problems, and you can, in these situations, develop, well, pterosperum folliculitis. And it presents as what we describe as monomorphic, meaning all looking more or less the same, little bumps centered on the hair follicle. In contrast to true acne, however, with pterosperum folliculitis, there are no blackheads or whiteheads. The medical terminology for blackheads and whiteheads is open and closed comedones. Those are going to be absent with pterosperum folliculitis, whereas they are characteristic with true acne. The other key distinguishing feature is that pterosperum folliculitis is itchy. Now, true acne can be itchy. The itch may kind of come and go, but pterosperum folliculitis, that is a more prevalent symptom and tends to be a bit more persistent and uncomfortable for the individual. People who are predisposed to getting pterosperum folliculitis are those whose immune system is weak, either because of medications that they take or underlying medical conditions. But people who are otherwise healthy can certainly develop it as well. It is a lot more common in hot, humid, tropical climates. People who sweat a lot are more at risk and people whose oil glands are really active Active, making a lot of sebum are also at risk. Say for example, you take a hormonal medication that causes your oil gland to make more oil, that can happen. Well, you might then be more at risk for pterosperum folliculitis. And we treat it with topical and oral antifungals like topical ketoconazole, oral fluconazole, and it'll clear it up. However, if you have seen a dermatologist, you've undergone these treatments and it's not going away, what else might it be? Well, one thing that can look an awful lot like it, but has a little bit of nuance in the findings is actually something called Demodex folliculitis. So if you aren't aware, in addition to having a yeast that naturally lives on our skin, we also have a little mite. Some people get an overabundance of these mites. Those patients tend to also have rosacea and they can develop little itchy bumps that look like acne, but again, in contrast, in contrast to true acne, there are no comedones, there are no blackheads, there are no whiteheads. Like pterosperum folliculitis, this itches, it is itchy. The itch tends to get worse at night as itch often does. Like pterosperum folliculitis, Demodex is more common in people whose immune system is weak, whether it be from medications or from an underlying health condition. Recently, there have actually been reports of patients who have atopic dermatitis who develop Demodex folliculitis while on the medication Dupilumab. Dupilumab is a medication that can be really great for atopic dermatitis. It influences the immune system, but a side effect might be skewing towards more favorable environment in the skin for the little Demodex and developing these itchy bumps. Demodex folliculitis primarily affects the face, not so much like the chest and back. Um, and it presents as these little itchy bumps with scaliness to them. Sometimes the bumps can be filled with pus and it can kind of look a bit like the bumps of rosacea. Now, if you're dealing with this type of facial eruption and you're trying to figure out, is this Demodex folliculitis or is this Pterosporum folliculitis? Honestly, it's gonna be very challenging for you. They're both itchy. They both lack comedones. Your dermatologist can take a little scraping of the contents of the bumps, look at it under the microscope. It can actually see the presence of yeast or the presence of those little mites. So that is one way to tease them out. Demodex folliculitis is treated with topical and or oral ivermectin. Topical ivermectin, a prescription that goes by the name Cilantro, can be very useful for this. It's actually FDA approved for rosacea. Patients with rosacea, they can develop Demodex folliculitis. With appropriate treatment, it will go away. The next mimicker that you might want to consider is 
take a look at those energy drinks, those supplements you've been taking, really critically evaluate how much vitamin B12 are you getting? Because patients can develop an acne-like eruption that honestly looks very similar to pterosperm folliculitis. They can be very hard to tease apart, but it is related to taking high doses of B12, usually in combination with vitamin B6, um, or just taking these supplements unnecessarily for a prolonged time. You can get an eruption on the face, the neck, the chest, the back, the shoulders, the arms. Like pterosperm folliculitis, the bumps are monomorphic, meaning they all appear the same. They're itchy. There are no comedones, no blackheads, no whiteheads. Now there are some cases of patients developing this where they get a little bit of swelling of their cheeks as well, kind of similar to rosacea, but that doesn't always happen. What do I mean by high dose B12? Greater than five to 10 milligrams per week. But honestly, you can develop it after taking B12 unnecessarily for a prolonged period of time. Also, I've seen cases of this in patients who got an intramuscular B12 shot. So that is another circumstance where you might encounter this. Why exactly does it happen? It's thought that the B12 accumulates in the pore and the bacteria that live in our pore, Cutibacterium acnes, it actually feeds off of that B12 and makes something called porphyrin, which creates a lot of inflammation. So that is, that is the underlying reason. Good news, you stop the high dose B12, B12, six supplements and it will go away without any treatment in about two to three weeks. They love to put a lot of B12 in energy drinks. So that could be, that could be, you know, causing this type of breakout for you. And it is itchy like pterosperm folliculitis, like Demodex folliculitis. Make sure you and your doctor are clear on all of the medications you are taking. Some people are on so many different medications. They don't know what they're taking. Their doctor may be new to them and doesn't know what they're taking and it can really get messy. So when in doubt, bring all of your medications, all the supplements that you take to your doctor's office visit and hopefully they'll be able to go through them with you. And last but not least, you might have, well, acne, true acne. True acne can actually present in a variety of different ways. And one of them is purely comedonal, meaning really all you have is blackheads and whiteheads. You don't get cysts, nodules, you don't really get pus bumps. So if you have a predominantly comedonal acne, it can look very similar, honestly, to, to pterosperm folliculitis. Kind of the distinguishing feature is, well, comedones, first of all, there are no comedones in pterosperm folliculitis. That being said, a whitehead is a closed comedone. For some people, especially the lay person who doesn't look at skin all day, you're not really going to be able to reliably distinguish on yourself a comedone versus a inflamed papule from pterosperm folliculitis. They can look very similar. It'll be challenging. If you see a blackhead, well, that supports comedonal acne. The thing about comedones with acne that is unique from these other entities that I have covered is that the pore is getting clogged with dead skin cells that are kind of inefficient in their turnover and getting stuck together. Then within the pore, you also have cutibacterium acnes breaking down an excess of sebum and generating inflammation. There can be a little bit of itch here and there, but it is not super itchy like these other entities that we have discussed. How do we treat comedonal acne? With topical benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, topical retinoids. Um, and I have lots of videos on all of the other acne treatments, so I'm not gonna get into it. But suffice it to say, sometimes our treatments for these different conditions overlap. For example, a lot of patients, while they won't necessarily clear their pterosperm folliculitis with this alone. It is part of the treatment and certainly can help, and that is benzoyl peroxide, likely because benzoyl peroxide has an anti-inflammatory effect. Benzoyl peroxide might also be somewhat helpful for Demodex folliculitis. Um, it's not going to be particularly helpful, however, for B12, B6 induced acneiform eruption. All right, guys, so that's a wrap up of three skin conditions that look like pterosperm folliculitis 
Vasculitis, what are not it. I really hope this video was helpful to you guys and kind of clarifying some different things that might be going on and why it is that what you think is fungal acne is not actually fungal acne. It could be one of these other things and that's why it's not going away. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.